Welcome to the Railway Series Book Club, the podcast where we dissect the Railway Series. I'm Jamie. I'm Marina. I'm Liv. And we hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Railway Series Book Club, where we have started recording 20 minutes ago, but spent that entire time trying to make a cold open about Kirby lore. <laughs> And we just kept on going on and on until the point where we're just like, fuck it. Let's start the actual podcast. You think railway? Now. Here, li- listen, all you, you, you railway series elitists. You think Thomas Lore is deep. You don't know the well that is Kirby Lore. That's my introduction. Hi, I'm Marina. <laughs> I'm still live. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm. I'm Jamie, uh, your hostess with the mostest. Uh, pronouns are she, her. Oh, the... I, 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 I am Liv and also I, she, I meant her. same in the terms of, like, uh, uh, my pronouns being she, her. I'm, I'm not the hostess. That's, that's Jamie's job. I'm not providing an uprising yet. I mean, we're, we're all hostesses. <laughs> We're all hostesses, technically. I'm just, yeah, technically, you know... Technically speaking, we're all the host. It's just Jamie stole the fucking title. I... Look, you you can you can have the title, too, if you want, but you choose to not go with <laughs> okay, any title. So, t- <laughs> so that's t- on you. Today, we're reading the book that I had inside my copy of the Complete Collection for some reason. Number six, Percy, the book that came with the Metallic Anniversary Trackmaster 2. <laughs> <laughs> Were you just like using that as a book? I know, I don't know why it was. Does it actually I don't have know why it was it? in here. It's just like, I'll, I'll send a picture. It's just like a little like book that came with like the like track metallic trackmaster Percy. And like, in like, is it an act? Is it an actual book? No, it's just Percy. It's just screen props from the show. And it's like, hi, I'm Percy. I pull my mail. Oh. Cutting literature exactly. right there. Which is lies and slander, because Percy doesn't pull the mail. Thomas and Percy pull the mail together as friends. But they don't talk about that anymore. Well, yeah, because, you know, Percy pulls the mail on time. You know, Thomas clearly doesn't pull it on time. So Wait, where did I send? Oh, I sent it to Just Live by <laughs> but... accident. I thought I sent, I thought I sent oh, the image oops. in the car speedrunning Discord I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> my, my first thought it's when you Percy. said Percy pulls the mail on time was Percy pulls the mail on time, Gordon does racial crime. Oh, oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> so on that note of racial hey, crime, today like we're talking you? about Henry. <laughs> uh, the sad story of Henry. I was about to say Henry come out, which isn't right in any way. I'm gay. Not what I wanted, but I support you. <laughs> the fat controller would. Don't don't know about Railway Series, the fat director, but I, we'll, we'll have a lot to say about the fat director, I'm sure, because this is his first story. It, it is. Yeah. Jamie, do you wish to begin our, our little our little fun story time? Uh, yeah. Unlike the last two stories, there wasn't really a lot to unpack about the existence of the story. You know, yeah. most of the stuff we have to unpack is to deal with stuff that happens, like, you know, because of towards the story. The as opposed to, Towards the end, as opposed to, like, uh, you know, before the story. Because really the most there is to say is I think the opening rhyme is supposed to have been inspired by a book that Audrey read as a kid. Uh, I, I don't really... I, I, I only just learned this recently, but, like, on the wiki, there's, like, a picture of a book from the 18th... I believe they do say that in the Thomas the Tank Engine Man, which I really should oh. get around to finishing. Oh, oh okay. Well, uh, on the wiki, they have a picture of a book from the 1890s, which was the original source of the rhyme at the beginning of the sad story of Henry. Oh, cool. So this this rhyme reads, Once an engine, when fixed to a train, was alarmed at a few drops of rain. So it went puff from its funnel, then fled to a tunnel, and would not come out again. Oh. 
So I I guess like it's definitely been changed a little bit, but yeah, you know, definitely. So like you know, copyright reasons. But I guess like you know, just reading that, I think given the way that uh, Edward's Day Out kind of like was created by, like, the gears turning in Audrey's mind as Christopher asked him, like, you know, why is this thing in the rhyme like this? Uh, I feel like this story could have just been spawned from Audrey reading this rhyme to Christopher and then him being like, you know, what's the engine's name? What did they do to get him out? You know, what if it stopped raining? Can't. So, like, that 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 could have been how the I story happened. I can see happened, that, honestly. It's possible, because nobody, nobody, like, I don't think they've ever gone into the exact origins of this story and like whenever they talk about the origins of the books it's typically just about edward and gordon yeah and i i feel like that is kind of fitting given like the way that originally the stories between edward and gordon and the story of henry here originally had no connection but i that 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 might not be as like fitting as i just said no i I can see it honestly because We'll get to it when we go through the story, but, like, even reading the story, like, when I was, like, going through it before this, it, there's, like, a couple things that make it, like, feel disconnected from the other ones. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if, if we're all done with opening preamble, then, then I think we should get right into the story. Oh, all right. Let us begin. Yeah. The Sad Story (laughs) of Henry. Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and never came out again. So that's a that, that's a very foreboding yeah. line, I think, but not very that yeah, that's I, not I, uh <laughs> intentional, I think. <laughs> I I think this is one of the first instances with the exception of um Edward and Gordon and like Edward's Day Out being combined, that there's like a change in the script in the TV series version because it changed the word never to like I think wouldn't. Yeah, wouldn't. it was. It's wouldn't. Yeah, it wouldn't come out again. Which I think carries over to the yeah. um, Adventure Begins too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because again, you know, never is very like final and foreboding in its like you know. <laughs> Imagine the entire story which is those two pages. It definitely works better with like the original pre publication version of the story. Like before they had to come up with an ending. You know for where all Henry just didn't come so, out. Like, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get more we'll get more into that as we like continue the story and like, you know, into the next episode. But like, yeah. Uh something worth noting here. Uh in the second illustration, Edward Well, I think that's Edward in the other illustration. Yeah, yeah that looks like Edward, but you know, for all for all we know, given how Dolby likes to play fast and loose with his I'm... character designs, it could be like fucking nine eight four six two or whatever. I think it's meant um, to be Edward, especially because he's not in the Middleton yeah, versions. Yeah, of course, you know, in the Middleton versions, you know, we can't even see the other tunnel board, but that just that just could be the you know cropping of the illustration or whatever. In the in the Milton version of the first illustration, Henry is wrong roading, and that annoys me. Yeah, it do be like that. Wait, there's like a like engines are supposed to stay to like a certain lane for. If you're on a railway, you will always be on the right side, or the left so... side rather. Like you'll always be on the left hand side. Yeah, it's it's kind of like how when you're driving a car, you'll always be on it's, the right it's... side of the road unless you're a heathen who lives in Britain. I never knew that. <laughs> It makes ske- it makes scheduling the engines a lot easier when you don't need to keep switching them over you know, that, all the time. That makes sense. Yeah. I just... oh. <laughs> yeah. Marina's second fucking like existential crisis begins. No, this isn't now. an existential crisis. It's just like a, <laughs> huh? I never knew that. And then I'll probably proceed to drive you crazy <laughs> by ignoring the realism yeah. of what I work yeah, on a series. My, this is the thing. Whenever you work on a project, I'm going to make sure that you record everything with the engines not wrong road. I, I, I'm, I'm putting Hank on soda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I I can reserve my... I can, I can, like, hold my suspension of disbelief to a certain point, but no. Look, no. Like, maybe... Maybe Sodor, for whatever reason, is built to, like, fucking, I don't know, Irish Broad Gauge or something, so it would be fine to have a giant... Sodor could run a 4 or 14-4. 
Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you don't know about the four fourteen four? I know about the four fourteen four. Soviet Union's ultimate boy. It was an engine yeah. so powerful it tore up the tracks, which isn't something Henry can do. Tied it together. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Have you seen the American version is... of that? Like the, uh... Uh, the Union, the Union Pacific Railroad had like a, it was like a two, a two twelve four I think, or maybe like a four twelve two. I don't know. It had twelve driving wheels, and it was also one of the few three cylinder American locomotives, because we weren't weirdos who used uh, three cylinders most of the time. I, I, like I think the, we did that occasionally. We we didn't really use inside cylinders that much in the States. It was, you know, there was, you know, a lot of inside valve gear for, like, earlier stuff. But, like, in, uh, you know, most of the time we just had, like, you know, two cylinders on the outside. Because, you know, those are easy to maintain. Unlike, you know, stuff on British rolling gauges, which is just insane in, like, how you have to maintain that. Hmm. See, the, the difference the difference is we actually made our engines look good anymore have you seen the streamline streamline i have i am not a fan i'm just trying to think if there is anything else i needed to say i mean those toast two pages aren't exactly very interested all right uh going on then the engine's name was henry his driver and fireman argued with him but he would not move the rain will spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes, he said. The guard blew his whistle till he had no more breath, and waved his flags till his arms ached. But Henry stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. I'm not going to spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes for you, he said rudely. So Henry is an asshole. Yeah, yeah Henry, like, just in like his first like two lines, they establish Henry's kind of a yeah. dick. Yeah, like later, later stories would like recontextualize this to like kind of fit in with Her Henry's later characterization of being a worrywart, which we'll you know we'll talk about oh, that eventually. The but, version. Uh, <laughs> but like, j just look at his face in this illustration. That is not the face of someone who is fearful of the rain. That is someone who is too fucking too up his own ass and concerned with his appearance to like you know take into account that hmm there are passengers on this train who need to get to work. I th there's a reason. <laughs> Henry, Henry Henry says fuck the Soto economy. There's uh, he's not the only person, but we'll get to that. <laughs> there's a reason I call myself the TV series bitch. Like I'm more used to like the TV series characterizations of. Like, the characters, and it's, like, reading this story again and, like, watching the, like, TV series versions of it again, like, kind of just threw me a loop, because it's, like, this Henry just feels really out of character to me. Like, my first thought was, like, like, it's, like, the this feels more like something James would do than Henry, but, like, I'm fully aware that's, like, a like, characterization marches on kind of thing. But, like... You know, not, not to mention the fact that James doesn't exist yeah. yet. So, him... Henry Henry displaying character traits that would later be absorbed by James is not yeah. really, like, a, a, a valid yeah, no, criticism. It's, it's, he it's doesn't not a criticism, yet. just kind of, like, an <laughs> observation for me. And it's, like... I know I brought that up, uh... I think on stream... Uh... Yesterday? Today's... Tuesday, Sunday, and like the general thing was, it's like, like Railway Series Henry is more of a dick than TV Series Henry, like kind of ever was, and it's like I, that's see, I I I don't necessarily consider Railway Series Henry a dick most of the time. He's just kind of like a yeah, grump. yeah. Like I feel like like Gordon's like Gordon's like a like full of himself. James is kind of full of himself as well. Henry's not necessarily full of himself after this story. It's more so that he's just kind of, like, he's just a grumpy I mean, guy. I, the way I see it is I think he's, like, I think he's just temperamental. Like, you know, he's he's temperamental about his paint. He's temperamental about, you know, his system being out of order. He's temperamental about, like, you know, other things. Like, 
I feel like the Ghislaine era, like, bio for Henry, where it says he's, like, a thoroughbred, like, a thoroughbred horse, is very accurate. Because, like, thoroughbred horses are very, like, you know, uppity and temperamental. Hmm. So, like, Henry's not really malicious. He's just, like, you know, if things aren't going his way, he'll be I upset I never about actually it. knew that's what that meant. <laughs> it's actually really cool. Yeah. This is, this, um, this is a small thing, and this is going into, like, TV series. One of my favorite Henry moments is actually um the when he talks to Thomas in Something in the Air at the beginning, where he's just kind of grumpy and just like, no, I don't care, go away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's danger on the rails, that's why we're late. You're the only danger on the rails, Thomas. <laughs> it's I mean, he's not Henry's wrong. Like, Fuck you. <laughs> Henry's not wrong about that. Yeah, Thomas, no, then, that's not he? wrong. I mean, no. And then, and then Henry nearly drowns, and the fact controller's like, what the fuck, Henry? Henry's I'm like, I'm going to blame you for this. <laughs> I'm going to blame you for the fact the rails were destroyed, and I, I think the signal didn't go off. Yeah, it, honestly, it, it was the signalman's fault, you know. All of this could have been avoided if they just listened to Thomas, but, like, you know. The one time Thomas is in the right, oops, Henry goes in the ocean. <laughs> the, wrong, the one time Thomas has something actually valuable to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I love I love how Henry specifically says green paint and red stripes here. Just, I like to think it's because Audrey wants the illustrator to know specifically. And Middleton still is. messed it up. In the second image, his stripes go from like red like, pure red in the first image to, like, a more yellowish with, like, yellow with, like, red outlines in the second. I mean, I, to me, that illustration looks like it's supposed to be red, but it, like, got washed out in the scan or whatever. Yeah, I could see that. I, I just, it, like, it looks yellow to me, no, and I just found that funny. Of, it's yellow in the same way that some people think Bill and Ben are orange in the Railway series. Like, they are not. They're yellow. <laughs> Yeah, they're yellow, but just because of the, like, way some of the, just because of the way the scans are, like, screen toned or whatever, they end up looking kind of orangey, despite them clearly being yellow. It, it's very weird, color balancing and, like, white balancing or whatever it's called. It, it's... I, I did... Add it, add it to the Thomas and Friends iceberg, the, the, the stripe color in the free railway engines. Yeah. Blue with yellow stripes goes on the iceberg. Speaking of which, I completely forgot to mention at the start of the episode, uh, we got f fan yeah! art. I don't we know how it. we're going to display it in the video, but uh, a, a friend of the podcast, uh, the Austerity Engine, made like a fucking uh, a render of Thomas in blue with yellow stripes, which actually reminded me, Audrey's original model of Thomas was blue with yeah. yellow stripes. So it it exists. This is the rabbit hole if, goes deeper. And, and interestingly, this is like actually kind of tied in. If we're talking about like if we like we're briefly mentioning the, like the original Audrey models, I find it very interesting that like not too long before we recorded this, we saw like new footage and new pictures of Audrey's or destroyed you know, Henry model. Oh yeah, that's wasn't been it really found cool. in like a desk or something? Yeah. It was it was found in a desk in the in the Audrey study, and the thing is, the Tallyland Railway didn't actually know that everybody thought it had been destroyed. Like they thought everybody knew it was fine and just unfinished, which is why they never showed it. It's actually really cool. Yeah, that that yeah. is really cool. Shout out to uh, Luke, the guy who runs the uh, like uh, museum section in the Tallyland uh, like social media, and he <laughs> follows us. Yeah, he follows us. That that's cool. Thank Shout you out. so much for that. Hello, Luke. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay. This is, this has gone badly no, off topic. I mean, but, we stayed uh, relatively on topic. I, I mean, it was it, it was still like it, it still was an interesting discussion, even if it wasn't necessarily tied to the exact illustration. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, in any case, I think it's time we move on to the next page. Let us continue. The passengers came and argued too, but Henry would not move. A fat director who was on the train told the guard to get a rope. We will pull you out, he said. But Henry only blew steam at him and made him move. <laughs> they hooked. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Henry made them wet. <laughs> oh, Henry, you sexy oh, fuck. Sir. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't mean for things to go that far. Uh. <laughs> oh no. Uh. Okay, so they they hooked the rope on and pulled. Except the fat director. My structure has forbidden me to pull, he said. They pulled and pulled and pulled, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. And we get to okay, meet. So, so, so here. We meet a fat You know, director. that surprised me, like, I, reading I, through this again. <laughs> yeah, I think it's very strange how, like, we all know him as the fat director, the fat controller, but that's only because they, like, you know, kept using him after this book. In this book, he's just a random-ass guy on the board of directors who is, like, portly and doesn't like doing anything for himself and just fobs off all the hard work onto commoners, very much like actual people on those, you know, boards of directors can i just point something out quickly yeah so in the illustration we see edward heading towards the tunnel but when henry goes into the tunnel we see edward leaving it i think that's to imply time has passed yeah actually how long could henry have possibly been in there for Edward to go all the way to, like, Vickerstown or all the way to Tidmouth, turn around I mean, and then come back. Around sooner? I mean, this is... Okay, going into the lore books, uh, I mean, this is Balahu Tunnel, which is, like, that's, like, pretty near the end of the main line, so I think it's feasible yeah, that it's, Edward it's could have, like, decently near his Vickers completed town. his journey. But, yeah. But, like, the thing, the thing with it is, like, oh, I guess you could say that Edward is, like, Maybe he's coming from Vickers Town in this illustration. Well, you. S- oh wait, no, that doesn't actually make sense because, okay, yeah, because in the, the he, first he, illustration he, we he's... see Edward, he's coming the opposite way of Henry, and then when we see him again, he's doing that again. So that meant he would have had to make like a, a round trip. Yeah, like around the entire railway and then back. Well. Yeah. I mean, we've established that Edward has disintegration powers, so maybe he just has teleportation powers, too. He's just like, I need to see how this plays yeah, out. The he's, plot he, used the, he used the fucking, uh, whatchamacallit stone? Is it the space stone that lets you teleport? Excuse me? It's not time. It seems like space. <laughs> Ed, Edward just has all the infinity stones and just, like, keep Wickham Edward just, I yeah. am inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we you should have gone for episode. the head, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just Bill and Ben are on either side of him. Just Edwards. You should have gone for the head. No, Bill. Bill and Ben are like the um, <sighs> the children of Thanos or whatever. They're, <laughs> they're uh, fucking uh, yeah. And Gamora. <laughs> so which one is trying to kill the I, other I, for sport? Actually... This is actually re- this is actually related. Um, the guy who did the illust- like the render of Thomas also sent me a message after finishing the episode saying the reason Bill and Ben think that Boko magicked away the trucks and the diesel is that Edward has that power and they just think everybody <laughs> except them can do that. <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> Canon. <laughs> You know, Ed, you know, Boko's just like, you know, I, I can't magic away trucks. And Bill and Ben are just like, well, this moron doesn't even know how to magic away trucks. <laughs> He's a metropolitan vicar's type too. His power is immense, but nowhere near my own. And don't you ever forget that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it reminds me of that one fucking Tumblr post that's like, uh, you know, when I when I was a kid, I used to like you know try and like think really hard to try and activate my powers of telekinesis. Obviously, I was a very stupid child. And then there was a post right under that saying like you know obviously too stupid to unlock uh, telekinesis like everyone else. Oh no! That's just. Um. Okay. I, but yeah, um, getting back on topic, the fat director is, you know, as as we kind of like went through earlier, is very clearly a, you know, satire of the people on boards of directors, like, you know, 
The fat yeah. cat railway barons who, you know, basically only exist to, like, give orders, make profit, and uh, make everyone else do Eat work for chip. them. You know, as <laughs> illustrated here, when he makes everyone pull the rope attached to the train, except for himself. <laughs> Which is actually quite interesting to think about how kind of drastically his characterization changed over the, like, the course of the books. Even just in the second book, he's a lot more, like, open and, like, nice to Thomas, even if he's, like, a little bit, like, Even in the next story. Undoubtedly, that's because the editors and, like, the people publishing the stories, they wanted him to be less like this and more like a father figure to the trains. You, you could also, you could also potentially say it as, like, considering this is, I believe, I believe his name is, this, like, this one is Charles Topham Hat. I think one? he's just Topham Hat. Oh, yeah, Tom, like so uh, obviously, Hatton. obviously we Mr. don't we don't know his name yet, and we won't know for a long time. But his first name is Topham, and his second name is Hat. He, you know, got a knighthood apparently at some point, so he is Sir Topham Hat. You know, yeah. Topham is like the middle name for all the other Sir Topham Hats. So you could, you you could consider it being that like Topham Hat is just kind of an asshole, and then like I think Charles is the second one. Is like a lot more mellow and like I don't, nice on them. I don't really see yeah. that though, because like as you mentioned, like even by like Thomas and like even by the next story, he's like nicer. And like I honestly see it as the result of like, because like this story was written, and I honestly don't think it was because like obviously the publishers insisted on the fourth story because they wanted a story that, like, ties everything together and has Edward and Gordon interacting with Henry. But it's, like, there's nothing in this story besides the illustrations, which, like, Edward doesn't show up in the Middleton version of, like, the illustrations. And, like, it, like, references the fat director as just a fat director and, like, the fat director as just, like, basically addressing him. Because, like, you've already been introduced to him. Whereas, like, from that point on, like, after this, he's the controller of the railway. Like, all of the engines know him, and he's not, like, a random person. So, like, I I think it kind of reflects just this story being a one-shot. And he probably just... Like, I could see it being that, like, it wasn't even editor or, like, publisher interference. It was, like, the unintended consequences of, like using the same character over and over again yeah. that he became as prominent and just kind of had to Yeah, he to couldn't just role. be like a one joke like parody of railway directors essentially. Yeah. That is that I feel like there is kind of shades of what there there's shades of this that kind of reflect in like future stories where Audrey writes a one-shot villain that doesn't really like make sense to come back. So you either have to, like, change it a bunch in order for it to make sense, like, with Diesel, or just never have them show up again, like, any of the other one-shot yeah. villains. I, this is a small thing. I just checked out of curiosity, and according to Wikipedia, Mr. Topham Hat, like, the first controller, it says is in every story until Old Iron, which is huh. his last appearance. Sure. Oh yeah, because that's because uh, in Percy the Small Engine, that's when uh, his son takes over as Fat Controller. Huh. Huh. And that, that, that's a lot longer than I thought he actually was. I I assumed he was only around for like Free Railway Engines, Thompson Tank Engine, James the Red Engine. I actually thought he was uh, there for a bit longer. I for some reason I always had it in my head that the first time we see Sir Totten Matt the Second was the Twin Engines. And part of the reason he was so harsh on Donald and Douglas was because he was trying to, like, you know, live up to the Fat Controller name or whatever. And these two new engines were trying to, like, you know, clown on him despite <laughs> him being the new Fat Controller. So, so what you're what you're saying is he was he felt threatened by these two random Scottish steam engines. Yes. <laughs> well, not really. I mean, threatened, who wouldn't more be like, threatened uh, by Donald and Douglas? Insulted. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, they are very threatening when they want to be, honestly. I mean, I, I mean this is the thing. Mari taught me not too long ago that they are the only Thomas characters to canonically swear. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, you they know, because they curse on Oliver in Scottish in uh, uh, Resource and Sagacity, I think? 
Yeah, that's the one. You stupid! Can I can't believe you did this to our turntable. We're we're very far ahead in terms of stories now. <laughs> Is that so- well? I mean, we. I I feel like that's just a natural consequence of us talking about the fat director's rising yeah. prominence. Yeah. I was like, I don't necessarily think it's like we shouldn't be allowed to mention stuff like that. It's more so like we shouldn't harm. You know, I, I wasn't saying it as a bad thing. Yeah. I just think it was funny that like we we've essentially like stretched like the entire yeah. railway <laughs> series because we went from this to Old Iron to the Twin Engines to Oliver's book, which is like the third to last, I think. Number twenty, I think number twenty-four. Yeah. Well, that's not the whole railway it's series, the, but that's the whole yeah, railway series that matters. Yeah, it's the whole railway series. <laughs> it's, the, it's the whole railway series that anyone cares about. Yeah. I was, I was. Uh, we'll, we'll have a lot to say when we get. I, I really hope we don't exhaust all of our Christopher Audrey story insults. Can I say? Can I say? Because I honestly I say feel like there's a lot to say. Can I say Christopher Audrey insult, please? I was. Sure, I was gonna compare. It. Um, like his stretch of the railway series to Dragon Ball Super, but that's an insult to Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I I feel, oh, man, I I don't know if I agree with no that. No valid. Like, at least I feel like they are kind of the same though, because they're both selling themselves as something new while basically yeah. just retreading all the old stuff everyone wants to get past. It, see, Jamie, this is the thing. It's okay if we needlessly repeat things in the Christopher Audrey stories. That's basically all those stories are. <laughs> We're just playing <laughs> true to the stories. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Uh, okay. Uh, Let us continue? Yes, let's continue. Uh, then they tried pushing from the other end. The fat director said, One, two... Shree, push, but did not help. My doctor has forbidden me to push, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed, but still, Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last, another train came. The guard waved his red flag and it stopped. The two engine drivers, the two firemen, and the two guards went and argued with Henry. We have our second cameo of Eagle. Well, that is the, that, that is the next illustration. For some reason, they mention... The red engine on the page the red engine is not on. Well, in, in the next page, that's when they have the red engine push, so... Yeah. And I guess we'll talk about that when we get to that page, just because that's when it shows up in the story. Yeah. But uh, I, for, for right now, I want to talk about how, like, the, these people can't think that they're gonna possibly move Henry <laughs> just by, like, you know, pushing or pulling him and the entire train, do they? If they try hard enough, one of them is gonna go super say. <laughs> How many people are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, I mean, that's like a- it's a train full of people. I'm sure that the illustrations are not entirely accurate to the amount of people who would be in it. If we are basing it off the illustrations, there are 13 people pushing this- this fucked up GNR Atlantic and like four coaches. They're surprisingly patient passengers. I don't to know be if it's four coaches. To do this. There, there's at least there's at least three coaches in the first illustration, and we can't see the rest of them. So it's at least three coaches. But if that's all of the passengers, that's a really light train. Like not not light not light as in like physically light because like again they're not going to be able to move that. But just like. But so few passengers maybe on it was one a train. Stopping train, and it was nearing the end. My my thought is maybe this like a bunch of people are still sitting on the train, wondering what the hell <laughs> yeah. is going on, and like these fourteen passengers are the only ones who like went out to see what was wrong. So the only reason these these are the only passengers on the train is because all the passengers know that Henry can barely fucking function half the time, so they didn't bother getting on his train. They just waited for the no. next one. Well, th- those issues aren't a thing, aren't a canon thing yet, so I, I-, I don't know about that, the... but, you know, that-, that could be. I thought it was, like, it. the issues weren't as bad until the, like, the tunnel incident happened. I think it says that in the lore books, but, like, I don't... I don't think I don't think that would have any like actual impact on it. Yeah, he- I don't... Henry's condition didn't become terminal until Henry the Green Engine. 
Actually, I, I'm I'm not gonna spoil this thing. I'm gonna say until we get to those stories, okay. just because like it's a thing to talk about. It, it 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 may also be relevant to say like in the law books, even like before canonically the tunnel happens, it said that like Topham Hat fucking hated I, Henry. I still though, I swear at some point in a later story, I think it's in Henry the Green Engine, but it's like I swear they say like. Oh, like, it's, like, just gotten, like, worse since, like, the t- like your time in the tunnel or something. Like, that, like, specifically, like, his you steaming know, it. I haven't read the Railway Series version of that book in years, so I may have just missed that. You know, I, I may be misremembering it, too, but, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. It's, an inter- it's interesting to think about. All of the, like, backstory of, like, you know... Henry being this, like, weird failed engine and, like, uh, you know, him being one of Sir Tom Hatt's rare bad bargains. Like, that that's all, like, retroactive stuff. In the current day, <laughs> all that really matters, like, you know, current day, uh, in the story, all that's really established is Henry's a stupid train who won't come out of the tunnel. Sir Tom Hatt's a stupid guy on the board of directors who wants the train to get out but doesn't want to actually put any effort into solving the problem except when it comes to like you know getting other people to do the yeah. work for him it was probably classic capitalism yeah yep all right so i guess we should move on to the next page now okay yeah let's go okay look it has stopped raining they said yes but it will begin again soon said henry and what will become of my green paint with red stripes then so they brought the other engine up and it pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever it could. But still, Henry stayed in the tunnel. So here is our good friend James, but not James. Yeah, so in the original illustration, the original Middleton illustration, this engine is very clearly supposed to be uh, like the red engine that we saw at the beginning of the book. Like just yeah. chilling in the shed with Edward and the five other engines. But I guess because Dalby is a freak, uh, he drew that engine as James, because James is red. Oh, with red reels for some reason. Yeah, I, I don't know. Because, like, I mean, I can... I don't understand the red wheels bit, but I do at least understand why he put James here. Because I guess he might have thought, oh, James is red, I'll just put James here. You know, there can't... It's not like there's more than one red engine. Especially because... Like, he he looks different than the red engine in the first illustration. Like, completely yeah. different. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that one has two front bogey this, this, wheels. It does. Uh, I, yeah, it has a slope front running board. It's got a longer boiler. Like, that's it clearly looks like not Mike. James. And, they're, and it, in the original version of the book, these are clearly meant to be the same engine between the illustrations, just because, like, they're both red. Like, you know, they... Middleton went through the trouble of putting Henry in the scene at the sheds, too. Because, like, you can yeah. see this engine is green. But I guess Dalby didn't put two and two together. Or maybe he just thought, oh, I'll make it look like James is a, like, cool hashtag uh, reference or whatever. This is the strange thing. I believe it's in, actually, Henry the Green Engine again, that we see this red engine again. And we it's not James because he has the red wheels. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I guess. I think that might just be, I guess, either either him <laughs> just forgetting what color James's wheels are, or him, like, playing around with whether or not he wants to have James have red wheels, and then just deciding, this, eh, I don't like him, but I I'm going to keep is, him in for this one illustration anyway. I think I chalk that up to because anyway. if I'm wrong, he got, like, that was, like, yeah. right before he got, like, sacked, right? <laughs> See, but this is the thing. If Dolby made a mistake, I guarantee there's some law somewhere explaining it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's because, you know, and we talked about this in the first episode, it's because Audrey was too nice to tell his kids that his, el- that his illustrator was a massive fuck-up. So he would come up with explanations. <laughs> I, I, I want to hear Audrey in the, like, his very old, like, British man voice just say, Re- Reginald Dolby was a fuck-up. <laughs> <laughs> question on like this illustration though do you think the red wheels were added after like 
Audrey pointed out to him that James couldn't be there or something. It's possible, like a, like Audrey wanted something to differentiate the engines, but the like the book was too far along into production to completely redo the illustration. The, the tender wheels still look black. Like, they are. Yeah. That might be looking way too deep that into it, yet, but I, I guess, guess what else is the? It. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> also, also, like I find it interesting that. It's like a small thing, but he has the lining on the back of the tender, which I don't think you see much in the railway series. Yeah, yeah, the butt lining is nice. <laughs> James, not James, does have a it's pretty great ass. It's not gonna slap itself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on that note, uh, let's continue. <laughs> I, I think what on that note, we should go to the final page and get also, yeah, this is the final page. This this story isn't very long, mostly due to the, the first two pages of this book are minuscule. And then there's like paints with red stripes. five pages of actual story. Yeah. Uh, OK, so they gave it up. They told Henry, we shall leave you there for always and always and always. They took up the old rails, built a wall in front of him and cut a new tunnel. Now Henry can't get out, and he watches the trains rushing through the new tunnel. He is very sad because no one will ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again. But I think he deserved it, don't you? So there's a lot to unpack in this final illustration. This was supposed to be Henry's canonical end. Yep, this... Uh, according to the internet and all those clickbait articles about the repressive authoritarian soul of Thomas no. the Tank Engine, uh, this is Henry's canonical end. He dies of no, starvation he... in the tunnel. The end. Nothing that's more not... to talk about. That's not what I meant. I meant the fact that literally when Audrey sent this book to the publishers, this was the end of Henry. <laughs> it literally was oh, that he yeah. was bricked up <laughs> and left there. Like, it's like, those articles, it's like, they're right in a way that, like, <laughs> like obviously they don't mean or they're know. Right, but because not in the right way. They're, they're right for the wrong reasons. Because <laughs> no wonder, like, the publishers were like, hey, add another story where, like, this is reversed. <laughs> Because it's literally just like, this was supposed to be the end of Henry. He was just an engine on a railway that's different from Edward and Gordon. And he was just supposed to be left there <laughs> permanently. <laughs> this, is where we, this, is where, this is where we get like a brief look at the alternate universe where that actually did happen. And then for the 70th anniversary of the railway series, they did a special about Henry getting out of the tunnel. God. Honestly, if that if that was the legacy of Henry, is that he was just like you know, I think it'd be fun if there was an alternate version of Thomas where everything is the same except like <laughs> Henry is the always for seventy Henry. years. Just no yeah, just Henry. like ever since the beginning of the series, there's been this one really fuck ass train who's just been <laughs> living in the tunnel this entire time, and then for the seventieth anniversary. They release him. They finally like, <laughs> like instead of like the instead of like the adventure begins trying to like r like poorly like reinterpret the story to not be as yeah as it is. They just like they like finally let him out. I don't know if that would make things better or yeah. worse. <laughs> I honestly, I think it'd be really funny if they if Henry was like kind of. Like, you know, they, like, imagine the tunnel is, like, you know, uh, you know, the tunnel, instead of him being released on purpose, it's accidentally released, and Henry just, like, <laughs> pops out of the tunnel, full overflowing with, like, Elridge energy, like, for thousands of years, I have I lay laid dormant. dormant. <laughs> Who has summoned me? It's, like, fucking, like, someone, like, <laughs> crashes and, like, breaks down the pick wall, and then, like, Henry, like, shoots out and goes on <laughs> He, he just turns into, like, whatever yeah. the monster at the end of, like, G1 is. <laughs> the fat director's like, you fool, why would you do this? Do you okay, know what so you've you, done? <laughs> so you, you know how, like, at the end of the adventure begins, Thomas runs into Glynn, and Glynn's like, oh, hello. What if it was just, like, Thomas just went to, like, the all-seeing oracle that lives in the tunnel whenever he needs advice? <laughs> 
that'd be pretty great. Seeing Oracle. I love, how I love do this I alternate ta- universe we've concocted. How do I prove that Gordon is a twat? <laughs> Just give well, him like ten uh, minutes, he'll do it himself. Just wait for him wait. to rush by with the express and he'll burst a safety valve. Just, just it'd be, it'd wait. Really for him for him to sound like a ghost. <laughs> just, just wait for him to speak, and he'll fuck himself over. <laughs> I mean, that is a lot of Gordon stories. Yeah, but yeah, um, I I think it's uh some interesting things here. Uh, in the text of the story here, it says that they had as part of this process they cut a new tunnel. So, like, this is directly contradicted by the uh, the illustrations in both of these stories because yeah uh, yeah because there's already another tunnel yeah it's already a two track tunnel like what what do you want to do here I swore uh, it was like they added a second track to the other tunnel or something but like that's in the TV series where they have like. Uh, one track is like double tracked, and then there's also uh, you know single track tunnel, which is the one Henry gets shut up in. Yeah, which, this is a small thing. I don't like that they changed that. I yeah, I, I liked it being like kind of a weird thing where Henry's tunnel is the one bore that Henry was a dipshit and got himself stuck in. Yeah, I I like that too. I I wasn't a fan when they changed that. Of, of course, you know, they're probably gonna, like, you know, do some horrible shit to Henry's Tunnel again in the upcoming Hell reboot. Oh, you know, see, if like they Henry's even manage to acknowledge it. Henry at all. That's gonna Henry's be, gonna be that's gonna be, that. Henry's Tunnel is gonna be the mine where the minecart comes at Thomas and he has the control over himself to jump over it. <laughs> <sighs> God. God. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Another thing with this story is, I, I, I like that they changed the ending in the U.S. version to like, oh, like how long do you think Henry will be in there? Because it's the original, but I think he deserved it, don't you? <laughs> no, this is the thing. Like I said this before we started recording. As a kid, I agreed. I thought Henry was being an asshole. <laughs> Like, yeah, you know, as, I mean, this isn't a, I feel like this punishment is kind of, like, a bit overboard, just, like, bricking the en- engine in the tunnel. Like, I guess it kind of makes sense as, like, a karmic thing, like, oh, you want to stay in that tunnel? Fine, we'll leave you there. But at the same time, that is kind of, like, it, it is a punishment that is a bit overboard and doesn't really make sense in the terms of the real world. And they imply like, it's been months in the Railway series. <laughs> Uh, in in the lore books, it it is canonically a year be- between uh, Henry getting shut up and Henry being let out. That is just it's fucked. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you know this this is kind of a fucked up punishment. You know, not only just because of like you know the you know psychological and I guess physical damage Henry incurred just because of like the whole you know being left in a tunnel didn't do any favors for his system lore, uh, but also just because like. It also really sucks for the railway because now they have to cut a second ass tunnel and also like brick in a locomotive. <laughs> I just like the idea. Not not a that, not like... a great idea for a railway that's currently undergoing a motive power crisis. Was what Even was if that I just engine like the does idea. Suck. Did they leave his coaches what? in there too? <laughs> I don't they don't say <laughs> and we don't see them later, so I guess not. Okay, but this is the thing. Imagine, like, Topham Hat going to the the next director's meeting, and th- they're like, So, Topham, um, how did you deal with Henry? We heard he was being a little bit troublesome last week. Oh, you'll, you'll love this. I shorted it out completely. You see, I took the track up, sh- and I put your brick walls in front of him, I did. <laughs> T- Topham, that's the only track to Vickerstown. <laughs> Oh, well, don't worry. We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna cut you another tunnel. It shall be fine. How long does oh, that? Like, that was a very ex- <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not. It's something interesting here is like it's not explicitly stated in the text that it's Sir Topham Hat that or that like put out the order for Henry to be bricked in the tunnel, but he's like in the illustration looking at Henry in the tunnel, newly bricked up. He looks proud so, I mean, of it. 
Like, he's standing I there mean, like, I yeah, guess... no, you're not so good now. <laughs> so, like, this, this is something about the story that those, again, those clickbait articles will, will you know, talk about, which is, like, you know, Hen Henry isn't really, like, you know, the good guy in the story, <laughs> but the, the fat director isn't the good guy really either, because he was, he was super ineffective, he didn't do any of the work himself, and then, you know, he basically just solved the problem by creating a bunch of new problems. He's not really the good guy in the story. This He's just thing, kind of like, I, you know, there. It might it might be relevant to point out that, like, as a kid who had already seen a lot of the show by the time I saw, like, Sad Story of Henry, and I knew Henry was going to come out anyway, I was like, yeah, no, he was an asshole. Like, leave him there. He was a dick. Yeah, like that... That's something that really confuses me whenever, like, you know, these articles will talk about how, you know, oh, children are scarred by this. But, like, any child that watches Thomas will be able to see, yeah, Henry's being kind of a dick. I, you know, and also just the fact that Henry is, like, present in, like, basically every Thomas everything until very recently after the story. So, like, if if you just look at the rest of Thomas, you can see that Henry is, like, omnipresent in everything until the whole big world big adventures thing but we don't talk about that so like it it doesn't make sense for these people to like you know say that the children will be scarred by henry being locked in the tunnel for everyone that's you know both clearly not the case and also like no child's ever been scarred by that i think it's just i don't think any child has ever been scarred by it but it's like I do see the thing where it's, like, kind of fucked up, because it's, like, less so if, like, you consider, like, what I always thought was implied, where it's, like, it was, like, a couple days, because it's basically the equivalent of, like, oh, go to your room, you're grounded for a week, like, kind of thing, whereas in this, it's now, it's canonically, like, a year, but it's, like, it's kind of dawned on me, like, I guess I've always thought it, but, like, Reading this more, it kind of is, like, really fucked up, this whole situation. Because, like, yeah, the articles, like, exaggerate and are for clickbait. But, like, the, the whole idea that they canonically left him there bricked up for a year in the Railway series. And, like, long enough that they build another tunnel and, like... It's said later that this gave him basically health problems or, like, made <laughs> conditions he had worse is, like, really fucked up. And, like, this kind of starts, like, a trend in the Railway series where, like, they don't just... Like, as I mentioned last episode, the, like, stories where it's like, oh, Engine A is a dick to Engine B, and then something happens to them where either, like, Engine b has to help them or like engine a realizes they fucked up but like this creates another plot point we or like story template that they bring up a lot in other stories which is engine acts stupid and then gets extremely disproportionate retribution like henry doesn't want to leave his tu a tunnel because he doesn't want to spoil his paint. So they take... So they brick him up and leave him there for over a year. Uh... What other ones are there? Like, Scruffy is a dick. So he gets ripped apart, and then the shirt top him hat is like, You know what? You're worthless. And then he's torn apart. Bulgy is an asshole, and, like, gets himself wedged under a bridge. So then they take off his wheels, make it so he can't move... And then leave him to rust while, like, chickens live in him in a field. And, like, Volstrode. If nothing else, I always thought that one was funny. You know, it's the thing where it's, like, they're funny, but it's, like... They it's... are kind of fucked up when you consider that they're, you know, living vehicles. And yeah. they're, you know, a lot of them are basically, like, you know... Even if it was their own hubris that brought this to their... That brought them into the situation... It's still kind of fucked up that they have, like, some kind of eternal punishment for being, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, like, it's just, it's the kind of thing where, 
like going back to what we were talking about with like that recurring plot line and like smudger and i'm just gonna call him smudger because smudger's the one with the toy and so he's the one i remember (laughs) and godred are like the most fucked up examples of it by far but it's like it's a very recurring thing that happens in thomas where it's like character is a bit of a jerk and then like horrible like fate that like if they were a person would be horrifying but because they're machines it's like excusable but oh yeah and the spike break fan i forgot about that too he just gets fucking crushed and you see his face being carried he's still conscious Personally, personally i like to think that in the tv series i just like you know I, I'd like to think they would put him back together just because he's still alive. Yeah, no, I, I like to think it too, but they also never say it. In the Railway series, they totally scrapped him. Oh, oh, definitely. He's just a, a stack of fucking timber there. This is like a small thing, and I don't want to like go too far into this. I significantly prefer the TV series ending to Toad Stands By, just because I think it's funny. Yeah, no, same. And I, I get why they made that change of like showing that it's like scruffy's all right but learned his lesson it's basically more the kind of the equivalent of like the like asshole kid on the playground who gets what's coming to him and then like who like accidentally gets pushed over by the nice kid and then is like realizes not to fuck with anyone anymore or something but it's like the in the railway series it's it's a lot more of a terminal affair. Which yeah. Is fucked up. Yeah, they get like permanently fucked up or killed or left to like rot and die. And it's because, like, regardless of if he gets out, left out in the next story, regardless of like people like going, like, oh, well, like anyone who like says like Henry in the tunnel is so fucked up, like, it's in the next story, he's let out. It's like contextually, they were planning on leaving him there forever they were it isn't like oh we'll like leave you there until you learn sense or something it's not like a day like to match up with like a little kid in time out like comparatively it's they they were literally planning on leaving him there forever and it's like that's that's fucked and it's like people there's this weird double standard with thomas where people want to be like oh it's not like, it's not a kid show, it's cool, and there's dark stuff, and it's edgy, and everyone's everyone's a jerk who hates each other. It's not about friendship. Fucking cheesy kid shows are about friendship. Thomas is the hardcore shit. But at the same time, whenever people go like, hey, some Thomas stories were kind of fucked up. People are like, oh my god, don't you know? Like, they, 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 no, it's not fucked up. You, you people are so, so stupid. Like, uh, Henry in the tunnel. It's like, why why didn't you watch the next episode? And it's like, it's like those, it's, it's like a, they want to be seen as, it's like, they want to be seen as cool, but they also don't want to have to, I guess, look into the fact that their favorite brand does have some problematic connotations to it that's exactly yeah, pe- it. people want people want to be validated for their interest in this niche toy train thing but also don't want to have to engage with it critically yeah and you know while, while it is definitely hard to do that for something that you know you've loved your entire life and you might not agree with every criticism that has become mainstream it is still important to take into account the criticisms that are valid and that's part of what this whole podcast is about yeah so, Wait. I think it's important that we discuss this. Yeah. Cool. And it's honestly, I think that's an issue I have in general. And it's like, cause I love the railway series. I like still enjoy it, but I, I do think there is this general mindset. And I've seen people outright say this, that it's like the definitive version of Thomas. It's perfect. There's, like, no adaption ever matches it and all that. I mean, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but I... Is there anything you can do? I, I do yeah. kind of think that it is the, you know... I, I do think it's offensive, but I wouldn't say it's perfect. Mm. But, like, I, I see what you mean. It is... That can be a bit of an insufferable mindset when, like, you know, other other pieces of Thomas have brought good things to the table. Yeah. 
I, 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 I think, like, personally, that, like, I, I think that every single era, with the exception of, like, the hit model era and, like, this early CGI, have merits that are better than certain others. And even then, I don't think Big World's better than any era, but they still had some good episodes, so I can't completely disregard it. Yeah. It's just a general thing where it's like, I think this is kind of an issue in media in general, because, like, adaption and, like, remake and, like, sequels today kind of are, unfortunately, usually driven by some merit of capitalism or like just solely done for a financial gain ca- cash grab yeah but it's like i inherently adaptions or a reboot of a work isn't necessarily a bad thing and in some cases it's the adaption i, 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 I think the stigma mostly comes from very low quality ones and not necessarily any actual issue with the concept because like i i forgive me for going like i guess a little bit far with this i i talked to mario about this a while ago like the paddington films are a very respectful adaptation of those stories and i think it's like you you can do very good adaptations that bring new things and new ideas to a like an old franchise and that shouldn't necessarily be like hidden from or disregarded it should be like embraced yeah and i i won't go too far into this because it would just completely derail things but i think in general it seems like a lot of people's ideal thomas reboot at this point would be literally just the railway series verbatim but like animated and i i there's probably no one listening to this that's in the same situation, but I'm a Sailor Moon fan. And there's this series called <laughs> Sailor Moon Crystal that a lot of oh, people no. are like, oh, the the manga was so much better than the anime. It's not. Um, it's like, it's so good. We need to see Nayako's true vision brought to screen. And... They did, basically, they're doing basically a verbatim adaption of the manga. And it's not good, because (laughs) works have problems. And just because something was the original author's intent doesn't make it good. Like, I've seen, I forget exactly what it was, because the manga fucking sucks. I was reading it today like i was reading like side stories from it today and it's like i I really don't like the manga but that's that's not the topic for this time but it's like there's two new movies coming out adapting the fourth arc of the manga which like the anime version of it super s isn't very good but like so a lot of people are like oh like the anime or the manga version so much better it's not it just has different problems but like, there was some, like, really weird thing that, like, is in the manga that, like, they kind of, like, hinted at in one of the trailers. I think it's someone crushing on, like, an aged-up Chibiusa or something, or, like... Oh, no. Or Sagi trying to do something with t- Tuxedo Mask when she's, like, aged down because there's, like, a chapter where they, like, age swap... It's weird. And someone said, it's like, well, they shouldn't change it because even if it is problematic, it's it's the author's original vision. And it's like... Sometimes the author's original vision is bad and fucked up. Yeah, yeah. and it's like even... That's one thing I think with the Railway series is that... And I know I'm in the minority of this and there's like topics we'll get into when we get into future stories that really highlight this more. But it's like, there's a lot of stuff that when you look on it in a modern lens, and it likely wasn't intended, but when you look at it, it's really kind of fucked up and gives some problematic vibes. And that the TV series, especially in the Brenner era, was outright trying to move forward from and address. And it's like, I think that's something that series need to do and for something like thomas to be as long lasting as it is obviously we don't 
need the reboot we're getting, but there needs to be some, for lack of a better word, modernization to it. (laughs) And, (laughs) like, even tying back to this story, there's a story that kind of does this, like, engine or character acts like an asshole and then gets a punishment for it at the end. In season five, the season everyone likes to push as the best, edgiest thing to come out of the Thomas franchise and proof why it's cool. And nine times out of ten, they're just posting that scene from Ba where Percy is really out of character. In By George, the story ends with George getting taken off the roads for a week. And, like, Thomas and Percy are like, haha, not so tough now, George. And he's just like, Ugh. And it's like, he's not turned into a fucking park. His roller isn't, like, ripped off and he's, like, boarded up or something. He's just taken off the roads for a week. Which, if that was a railway series story, that wouldn't have happened. Like, he mm. would have gotten some sort of, like, tunnel hen house type punishment it really says something about how like even in the original stories that were trying to like emulate the same energy they still wanted to like not do that yeah there was still stuff they were trying to push away from and it's it's honestly thinking about it like going but this is going back more but it's like why i can see that in season four when they did tote stands by they had scruffy show up like fine at the end Whereas in Break Van, they didn't, because I think season one and a season two was still when Audrey was very heavily influenced and involved in the show. Whereas I may be completely wrong, but I think in season three is when it started becoming more Brit's vision of the series, Mm -hmm. which isn't a bad thing. I don't mean it as an insult, but I mean, because I honestly, there's things about Brit's interpretation of Sodar that I like yeah better there's there's positives and negatives yeah Yeah. and it's it's why i i I guess like i guess like as a whole it's that there were there were problems with the railway series very major problems and this story kind of is not necessarily for its own fault but just like for its content is kind of the perfect reflection of those problems yeah. yeah, this is, like, the genesis of those problems, which I think is it really kind is. of fitting, since it's the first it's the first story that kind of exemplifies this flaw with the Railway series, and is presented along with, you know, the former two stories, which also established the main tones of the Railway series. Yeah. And the next story is also going to establish, you know... A lot. ...more recurring themes yeah so yeah it's, yeah it's interesting honestly I, I i this this book definitely does show like it definitely gives off the vibes of first installment yeah yeah i feel like you know a lot of the like problematic elements of the story just stem from the fact that this series took off and became a long-running thing like you know the original version of the story henry was left in the tunnel indefinitely because you know that's just where the story ended, and it didn't have to be part of any kind of yeah. cohesive universe you know, or, you know, expanded series. I, I do wonder, like, if they did that, how far the series would have gone. Not very to me. I, I see it adopting kind of a thing to, like, a weird rail... Maybe it'll get, like, a niche as, like, a weird railway version of Grim Fairy Tales... Or it's like, it's like, yeah, oh, I, kids, misbe- like, don't misbehave, or like, something fucking horrible happened to you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if, if the fourth story hadn't been forced to come into being, I feel like it would have been like a weird relic of like, you know, people trying to sell books of trains to kids, like Sammy the Shunter, or what have you. <laughs> I, I, does anyone else have anything to say, or should we like, move on to like ratings and stuff i guess the only thing i can really think of is should we talk about the adventure begins version because i uh i i do think it's interesting in the regards that it's like they were clearly trying to address the story both in terms of like 
Henry's character in this does not fit TV series Henry whatsoever, oh, and it's no, like not even remotely. definitely not. I I think they kind of realize the story's a bit fucked up, but I I I find it funny that they just they made it worse in every regard. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> did because like you know in the original version of the story Henry's you know. Henry being bricked up in the tunnel is the result of his own hubris, you know? He didn't care about what happened to the passengers, so they just decided, all right, fuck it, stay in the tunnel. See how you like that. But in The Adventure Begins, he's legitimately afraid of the rain. And so, you know, instead of actually helping him through his trauma... They give him a new trauma. Yeah, it's like, oh my god. That, um, like, yeah. As much as and I've then, said, this version is fucked up. That one's even worse. And it's like, it's part of what makes me think. It's like, I, I just don't think this story really works well anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, by trying to, like, make the story fit Henry's, like, modern CGI characterization, they just made it more fucked up. And I don't think they realized that while they were making it. I and then Thomas is just like, come outside, fuck your trauma, come on. And then Henry's like, oh, I guess I'm fine. That yep. scene is cute though. But I, 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 it, it, I, I do cute. like that scene. Like, I'm making jokes about it, but it's like a legitimately really yeah, fun no, scene. It's good. And yeah, it's like Henry's I, only yeah. major role in the entire special. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it would. I would have been happy if they just kind of skimmed over sad story of henry given how yeah most of the film was supposed to be about thomas and his coming of age i feel like since they did edward and gordon they felt like they had to like acknowledge it and do it but like honestly i feel like the best way to like adapt this story outside of like doing what don did for his rewrite which is really good and if you haven't seen it check it out but um is, like, a story where it's, like, tying in more to his railway series characterization, because it's, like, I just don't see, um, at least modern TV series Henry doing this, like, at all. This would be more of a James thing. But it's, like, it's, like, oh, Henry doesn't want to leave the tunnel because, like, he doesn't want to ruin his paint. So, like, okay, fine, stay there. And then it's, like, some other engine comes and takes the truck, like, the coaches, and it's, like, oh, well... It's like, why, if you're, like, so worried about your paint being ruined, why don't we get you a new one? And then, like, they strip him down to primer or something. And then, like, (laughs) Edward Gordon Henry is that it's, like, he proves himself. Like, maybe it's, like, raining when, like, Gordon breaks down and, like, he offers to take the train and stuff. And, like, through proving himself, he gets his coat back or gets, like, the... So, so it's, like, a mixture of... It's like a mixture of sad story of Henry and Henry sees red. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> that 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 is. I hadn't thought of that before. That that actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it, yeah. honestly, it's something I thought of like kind of off Just of my now. head during this. Yeah, and it's this really is an interesting story. <laughs> yeah, this is a very troublesome story in a way. So there is much to think about. Yeah. So if if we want to go on to ratings, uh, why don't why don't you take the lead, Mari? Okay, so this is a rating I legitimately didn't think I would give until I started researching for this episode because I I forget if I mentioned this, but like I I tried to do more than like I have done in the past with this story for these episodes where it's like usually I like read the story in advance and like I'll usually watch like the TV series version because it's like. I watched, like, both TV series versions. I read the... I listened to the story. I read it, like, twice. I, like, watched the Adventure Begins clip. And it's, like... I didn't expect just how much I dislike it. Because... Honestly, this gets a Thomas from me. Because at least in its railway series incarnation, and even, really, the TV series ones, there's nothing I really like here because Henry's a dick and like yeah it's like early it's this was intended to be a one-off story railway series Henry is more of a grump but it's like he's just an unlikable dick that I don't think says anything except like but think about my red paint or my red paint oh my god (laughs) James yeah I I, 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 don't know but this this fits James more, and it's like I know James wasn't introduced yet, but <laughs> it's like it's like his well, green paint and red stripes. <laughs> this is the thing. Do you think this story would be more likable if you swapped Henry out for James? I 
I think it would. I mean, you you could do that, but that's still not like. I mean, it it'd probably be more in character for James, but it doesn't really negate yeah. the base flaw of the whole tunnel thing. Yeah, I, it's I, not addressing like the core problem with the story, but like I'm thinking as like a in think, character kind of thing. I think at best did bump it up to an Edward for me because, like like I said, there's really just nothing here that I like. Yeah. It's, the fat controller jokes are like the oh like my doctor's forbidden me to pull or like push are funny and it's like I I still like like even in the adventure begins where it's like the fat controller is a very different character than he was especially at this point in the railway series and it's like th that's something I think is a good thing and I think it's something that the series has like needed to move on from and like the fact uh the Brenner era explicitly tried to address because it's been, like, a big criticism of the series that it's like, oh, like, the fat controller's, like, a dictator or something. And it's like, they make it very clear he's not. He's a person that cares about the engines. And it's like, it's like that joke still works just as well in The Adventure Begins. And it manages to still be in character, just in, like, a less of, like, a... a different way. Yeah, and, like, instead of, like, a, oh, like, lazy railway men like director thing it's like a just like the fat controller being like him and i like that but it's like besides that it's like there's really nothing here and it's like we we're kind of saying before it in the same way the earlier two stories kind of establish a lot of what the series would become and a lot of what i love about it this kind of for me feels like the format of a lot of what i hate and like both in series wise and metally with thomas and mm. yeah it's mm. just this is a story where it's like i i can't really say there's anything i liked about it and i kind of came out disliking it more than i liked it mm. yeah i i i see that personally i I don't know if I can really bring myself to say that I, like, hate it, because there are a lot of Railway Series stories that I feel like I have more negative thoughts about than this one, but I feel like that might just be, like, you know, nostalgia for, like, the early Thomas clouding my vision, and, you know, me oh, not thinking valid. objectively. So, I, I feel like personally, I, you know, you know, personally and, you know, very fittingly would give the story a uh, Henry. <laughs> So, like, I... it's, you know, it's not really good, but I I wouldn't really, I personally wouldn't put this at the bottom of my tier list. I completely get that. This, this is an interesting thing. When, before we came in to record this episode, I was actually going to give it, like, a James or a Percy. But then we started getting more into the story, and I kind of started thinking more critically about it. And honestly, I I agree with Jamie. I'd probably give it a Henry. Yeah. yeah. I completely got those. I think for me it's like partially so low just because like I, I kind of have like a lot of in a weird way like I said it kind of ties into a lot of like personal feelings I have on like the franchise as a whole and um, both Liv and Jamie can attest I have some really overly strong opinions on Thomas stuff <laughs> than I should it's, which it's... we will not get into in this. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I I don't think any of us were expecting this episode to be quite so, I don't know what's the right word, like, Packed. problematic or heavy. Yeah. But, you know, I, it does, I feel it like does. if there was any episode that was going to, like, you know, be like this, it was going to be this one. You know, yeah. it's. Yeah. And yeah. at least in my opinion. Next episode is going to be a lot more fun story, so we're we're you we're, know we're, we're, I we can I, only I, go up I'm, from here. I'm glad we discussed a lot of the flaws in this story because I feel like when when I think about the next episode, it also like like I said earlier, it also carry carries on the theme of establishing the ways the stories would be formatted from you know essentially till the end of the series. Uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of the themes established in the next story kind of uh you know in con they contrast to this one in like certain ways that i will 
you know, I, I haven't quite formulated how to say properly in my head yet, so I'm going to wait to talk about it next time already, when it's more appropriate. <laughs> I already get what you mean, and I obviously won't go, like, in detail on the next story because as um, a very famous YouTuber would say, that's a story for another day. <laughs> for another day. <laughs> but, Good uh, night, everybody. Um, this has been the Railway Series Book Club. Wait, I, uh, I, I didn't finish the line. No. <laughs> I was going to say that, like, I... I, I, I no, we need to end it there. We're not going any further. <laughs> yeah, We're just trying. end it no, there, this honestly. This is the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's the perfect ending honestly yeah. <laughs> yeah. this has been the railway series podcast wait i didn't finish the thought <laughs> and it just ends with I, the music I, yeah i've been jamie <laughs> i i have been liv i've been marina <laughs> yeah see you next time see you next bye time bye. <laughs>